everybody. This is uh, Ron Dittmore talking to you from the Erasmus Academy Recording Studios in Brooklyn, New York. And this is a another sequence uh, in the uh, daily portion of German recordings. And today we have a special guest with us. Um, Hannah, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi there. My name is Hannah. I am a PhD student studying history. And um, I had the pleasure of taking a German course with the Erasmus Academy this summer. And I'm really looking forward to reading with you all today. Great. Okay. So this is a sequel. Um, of the uh, of the daily portion of German, and uh, I'm going to give a little bit of background on the um, <clears throat> on on the life of Ficino, uh, which is our topic for today. So, um, and Ficino, if you can see in the in the picture here, um, is is right here, uh, right where the markers. Can you see my marker? And can you see the yeah. pictures um, right now? Yes, I can see the picture. It's kind of in the middle of the screen. Perfect, great. Okay, so Marsilio Ficino, uh, born in 1433 and died in 1499, was an Italian scholar and a Catholic priest who was one of the most famous humanist philosophers of the early Italian Renaissance. When I was studying um, uh, French uh, Renaissance lyric in Germany, actually Ficino was mentioned as, as a, a major character that the poets and the writers of the French Renaissance lyric would refer back to. Anyway, he was a um, he was an astrologer, a reviver of Neoplatonism, in touch with the major academics of his day, and the first translator of Plato's complete extant works into Latin. His uh, Florentine Academy, an attempt to revive Plato's Academy, influenced the direction and the tenor of the Italian Renaissance and the development of European philosophy. So here's a picture here, as, I, as you see on the screen, and then a picture of, of him with some of the other uh, intellectuals or, or doctors of the church there in this picture. And then, um, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, this Cosmico of de' Medici, a very important figure, of course. And then the famous uh, School of Athens of Raphael, which uh, obviously <clears throat> shows all the great important figures, philosophical, scientific of the, of the Greek uh, of ancient Greek, uh, of the period of, of the great um, uh, Greek um, <clears throat> golden age. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's go to, um, uh, I'm going to go to the text right now. So let's see here. Uh, okay, so can you see this, this text here? Um, Right now? Yes, I can see the text, and I and your camera is still on. So if you want the text to be in the middle of the screen, um, it, it, it's right in the middle of the screen, and your camera is still on. Okay. Um, all right. Good. Uh, so now, now it's right in the middle of the screen. Uh, yep, it's in the, it's in the middle of the screen, and yeah, I can see it perfectly now that you moved the um, now that you moved that to the bottom. Okay. Great. Uh, hold on a second here. Okay, so um, and let's see what the, if the pen. Uh, can you see this pen here, the uh, orange color? Yes, I can see it. Okay, perfect. So this is um, it's a passage. Uh, this is the beginning of the biography by Paul Richard Bloom, and uh, um, it's uh, it's this is the text that we're going to do for today, from here down to here, and this is the thirty third portion. That is, there there are thirty two other recordings uh, preceding this. And of course, this is about Ficino. This uh, text looks fairly straightforward, but there are a, a couple of tricks in this. And uh, we'll just follow our normal procedure. And that's, uh, I will read the uh, sentence out loud and uh, Hannah will repeat after me. And when Hannah does, please uh, repeat with her so you can get a sense of the flow of the sentence <clears throat> and the pronunciation. And then I'll ask her individual questions about the grammar of the sentence. And um, and then um, I'll, to analyze the sentence step by step and try it in your own imagination, as you've done before with this series, try to um, answer the question in your own imagination as to what the what the proper reply would be. And in that way, step by step, we would build up an understanding of the meaning of the sentence. And then you should, by, by the end of this procedure, then you should be able to translate the sentence uh, more or less on your own. So. Um, Okay, so you're all set. Um, just chewing something that, that allows um, 
<clears throat> just have a little frog in my throat. Okay, so you ready to go with the first one, um, Hannah? Yes, all set. Okay, okay. Uh, let's read this together. Das Leben Marsilio Ficinos. Everybody? Das Leben Marsilio Ficinos. Lässt sich als das eines platonischen Philosoph Philosophen darstellen. Lässt sich als das eines platonischen Philosophen darstellen. Okay, so you remember, I'm sure you remember this, that we always look at the verb first, then we try to identify the subject second, and in third place, the direct object, because that, that way we identify the core sentence around which everything else is built. In the fourth position, we would look for a dative that part of the verb or that is affected by the verb and then identify any any um, items that are that are in the genitive which are um, which we indicate with parentheses okay so where's the uh, verb first of all and that up to this uh, colon here uh, Hannah sure so the verb complex I believe is uh, less sich darstellen good okay so we're gonna put a box around that less sich sorry Darstellen up here, and this literally means it allows itself to be represented. Darstellen by itself means to represent, and less seek in this construction means it allows itself to be to be represented or it can be represented. And what's the subject? The subject is uh, Leben, das Leben. Yeah. So the life, and then what case is Marsilio Ficino's, and how can you tell? Um, I believe uh, it is um, genitive. Mm -hmm. um, and um, is it because um, it's, uh, you can see that it's uh, possessive, where there's an S at the end? Exactly, yeah. For proper nouns, uh, they just tack an S on the end <clears throat> to, to indicate that that would be in the, in the, in the genitive or the possessive case. So that this means the life of Marsilio Ficino. And then um, what does the DAS refer back to? Uh, das refers back to uh, Laban. Yeah, you know, all the way back. The antecedent is Laban. So the life of Marcin of Marcelo Ficino um, can be represented as that. And then, what what case do we have with here for Ines, uh, Platonischen Philosophen? Um, is it also uh, genitive? Yeah, uh, here is indicated of a genitive when you're looking at a masculine or a neuter noun. And what about this en here at the end? What what is this? Um, uh, make us think of um, an, an, an N noun. Yeah, it's one of those N nouns um, <laughs> uh, whereby a masculine noun um, mm -hmm. that has its plural in en or n uh, will add an en in the three in the three cases of genitive, dative, and accusative. So this means um, okay. So having analyzed that, that up to this dark sound, you want to. Translate slowly that first uh, section. Sure. So, um, the life of Marsilio Ficino um, can be represented as as that um, of a Platonic philosopher. Perfect. Fantastic. Okay, going on. Sorgenfrei und asketisch zugleich. Everybody. Sorgenfrei und asketisch zugleich. Consequent in der Entwicklung einer Idee. Consequent in der Entwicklung einer Idee. Der des christlichen Platonismus. Der des christlichen Platonismus. So I, I always say that, you know, the more chance you have to read, and I hope you're reading uh, together with um, Hannah, but the more occasion you have to read out loud and to get the feel of these words, the, the more uh, actually fun it is and active, actively you're involved in this. Okay, so um, they're talking about, uh, so the, um, how about Sorgen frei? Frei means free. Sorgen mm -hmm. means care. So this is carefree and ascetic at the same time, referring to this um, philosopher, obviously. And mm -hmm. consequence is a false friend. It really means um, uh, consistent as, as opposed to consequently. Um, okay. So, um, and, and what, what case is this, Einer Idee? Um... Is it also genitive? That's right. Yeah, it's it's genitive too. So, so um, uh, just translate up to that comma there. Okay. Sorry, um. So. Sorgen fry. Okay. So um, carefree, um, and ascetic at the same time, um, 
uh, consistent in the development of an idea. Good. And then, and then dare refers back to what? The uh, idea to, to ED. And it also reflects this, this uh, case uh, uh, in the development of an idea of that of, and then, and then here's another genitive here, of Christian Platonism. Okay, you want to just uh, slowly uh, um, go through that first uh, couple lines there, just so we can follow you? Sure. Um, okay, so the life of Marsilio Pacino can re be represented as that of a Platonic philosopher. Mm -hmm. um, carefree and ascetic at the same time, consistent um, in, in the development of an idea, that of Christian Platonism. Yeah, so um, when they say uh, carefree and, and ascetic, it's obviously referring to the, the characteristic of Ficino there. Um, mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Fantastic. You did, did a great job. Let's go on. Um, and uh, es gibt keine Katastrophen, Kehrtwendungen oder Weltreisen. Everybody. Es gibt keine Katastrophen, Kehrtwendungen oder Weltreisen. Von denen zu berichten sich lohnte. Von denen zu berichten sich lohnte. <laughs> okay. Um, what does es gibt mean? Or what are the two things it can mean? Um, I believe that there is or there are. Great, yeah. So there are, it's sort of like the French, il y a can be either one. Um, no catastrophes. Uh, this is actually um, turnabouts. So vendung is a turn and kehren is to, is to travel. So this turnabouts or, or obviously changes in his life or and then weltreisen. Reisen means to travel. So this is uh, world travels or journeys. And then um, from here, from which, uh, wh where's your verb complex there? In the... Um, the verb complex would be uh, sich lohnte. Good, sich, lohn, sich lohnte. And then where's the complementary infinitive? Um, the complementary infinitive is... Um... It'd, it'd be right here. Mm -hmm. And, and sich lohnte means it is worthy to report or to, or to, dis or to, um, uh, <clears throat> um, to, to account for. Okay, so um, so you have all the parts here. You you want to go up to um up to this point here, just starting with Eskip. Sure. Um. So there are are no catastrophes, uh, turnabouts, or world travels, um, about which it is uh worthy or perhaps worthwhile to tell or to report. Exactly. Good. Yeah, worthwhile is a nice way to translate that or render that. Okay. Going on. Um. Then there's a Colon here. Kein Vergleich mit seinen Zeitgenossen Nikolaus von Cues oder Giovanni Pico. Kein Vergleich mit seinen Zeitgenossen Nikolaus von Cues oder Giovanni Pico. Pico. Okay, so um, Vergleich means comparison. So you want to just say that little straight um, line there? Sure. So, um, so no comparison um, with his contemporaries, uh, Nicolaus von Cues or Giovanni Pico. Good. So obviously they're drawing, he's drawing, a, the author's drawing a contrast between um, the, <clears throat> the, the major transitions or, or upheavals that might occur in one of these other person's life to, to result in, in a, another turn, for example, whereas um, Ficino's life was, was relatively calm and, and uh, more or less predictable, I would, I would guess. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so no, no comparison with his contemporaries. Da, da, da. Going on. Oder gar mit seinen Zeit, sorry. Oder gar mit seinen geistigen Erben, Francesco, Patrizzi, oder Giovanni, uh, Giordano Bruno. We did this already. Uh, so um, you want to just translate from there, um, or? Uh, uh, so um, so starting with oder. Um, so. Uh, or, or indeed, um, with his uh, intellectual or, or spiritual heirs, um, Francesco, Patrici, or Giordano, Bruno. Good. So the word uh, geisty can actually mean, uh, can, can be construed as either intellectual or spiritual. It, it has both those connotations. So with his um, intellectual or spiritual heirs, uh, that is those that followed him, um, these two persons that followed him, so who also then had some major changes in their life as compared to the um, the life of um, Ficino. Okay, going on. Mm -hmm. Auch Ficino litt unter spirituellen 
Irritationen. Everybody? Auch Ficino liegt unter spirituellen Irritationen. Private Streit mag auch ihn von der Arbeit abgehalten haben. Uh, Privater Streit mag auch ihn von der Arbeit abgehalten haben. Okay, let's go down to here. Let me just erase this first part here. Um, Okay, so we're right here. Going on. Uh, 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 where's the um, uh, up to this point? Where, where's your verb, um, Hannah? Uh, lit. Lit, lit. Yeah, right here. So uh, this is comes from the verb uh, leiden, and we always try to learn the three principal parts of the verbs, especially the strong ones that have a change. So the infinitive is leiden to suffer. Lit, he or she suffered and gelitten, having suffered. <clears throat> so it's um, leiden, lit, gelitten are the three principal parts of that verb. So also, Ficino suffered um, under uh, spiritual irritations, uh, pretty straightforward. And then uh, up from here down to abgehalten haben, where's your verb complex, Hannah? Uh, so it starts with mag mm -hmm. and then abgehalten haben. Okay, great. Mag abgehalten haben. So this means to hold back abgehalten haben. And we always put a box around the verbs. And and um, where's the subject? The subject is straight. Straight. Underline the, st the subject. I don't think we introduced that this is actually an adjective, which we put dash lines under, if you want to be really particular. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. then where's the direct object? Uh, the direct object is in. in. And we circle the direct object. So there you have the core sentence. So if you just read the core sentence by itself, you would say, uh, Streit mag ihn abgehalten haben. And this means um, may have held him back. Um, okay, so and Streit, you could say with quarrel, so a private quarrel or... <clears throat> um, uh, okay, so... Um, or, or you could say maybe more idiomatic, but might be private quarrels held him back. Uh, so you want to just translate that from this point? Sure. So, um, so private quarrels may have held him back from work. Good. Going on. Sogar politisch war er gelegentlich in Gefahr. Everybody. Sogar politisch war er gelegentlich, er gelegentlich in Gefahr. Okay. So the passage is a little bit more complicated than it looks at first glance, actually. So, um, where's your verb in that in that phrase? Uh, your verb is uh, var. Subject. Er. Yeah. And uh, what is um, politisch? What, what part of speech is that? Um, is it an adverb? Yeah. So which we'd mark with a jagged line like this. Uh, adverbs don't have any endings. That's the way to, to distinguish them. Um, uh, so, and, and even um, he was occasionally, gelegenly, in danger, uh, politically in danger. You would uh, draw that in there. Uh, okay. So even... Politically, he was occasionally in danger. And then going, aber all dies ergibt doch keine dramatische Vita. Everybody? Aber all dies ergibt doch keine dramatische Vita. Unrechtfertig im Rückblick nicht. Unrechtfertig im Rückblick nicht. Von differenten Phasen seines religiösen oder philosophischen Denkens zu sprechen. Von differenten Phasen seines religiösen oder philosophischen Denken zu sprechen. Now in, in our tradition with the, with the daily portion of German, we normally try to keep keep these each section to 12 minutes. I see that we're at 19 minutes right now, but I, I hope, I think everybody's doing pretty well, don't you think, uh, Hannah, as far as following along yeah. with this? I think so. <laughs> I think they're doing a, you're all doing a great job. Okay, so uh, going on here from Aldi's, all um, up to here. Where's your verb? Um, your verb is uh, ergibt. Yeah, so it means it it yields or or it generates um, <clears throat> from ergeben. Mm -hmm. Subject is uh, all this. Yeah, all this, uh, all all that was referred to uh, uh, earlier, and then mm -hmm. direct object. Um. Uh, Vita? Yeah, yeah. Uh, dramatic. You could in, include this adjective if you wanted to. Kind of 
so all this yields no dramatic life. <clears throat> and then um, of after the un, where's the verb? Um, after the un, it is uh, rechtfertig. This means to just to uh, justify rechtfertig. Rect means right or proper, and fertig means to conclude. Um, uh, let's see. Um, and, and where's your complementary infinitive? And it does not justify, because you, when you when you come to a verb that seems to sort of hang in the air, that needs some completion, then you should look ahead to see if there's a, a, a complementary infinitive. And where is that? Um, that would be at zu sprechen, at the end at, of the sentence. At the very end. You often find this, the complementary infinitive at the end. So, and it does, and it does not justify um, in retrospect to speak of, etc. Okay. Um, let's see. So why don't you start with aber here and just go through okay. the, just translate the rest of the, of the paragraph. Okay, great. So, um, so, but, um, but all this, um, however, does not amount to or, or yields no dramatic life yeah. and, uh, does not in retrospect, um, justify speaking, um, of uh, different phases okay. of his religion. Oh, sorry. Yeah, good. So um, you really nicely did this. So uh, and and justifies. Uh, you could say justifies to speak, or you could say which you did more uh, smoothly and justifies speaking in retrospect of the different. And then finish that. Uh, phases of his religious or uh, philosophical thinking. Great. And here's a, um, a infinitive made into a noun uh, in the genitive case, and and that then yields an English uh, gerund thinking ing word. So really great job, um, Hannah. Thanks so much for that, and we're looking forward to um, going on with this uh, passage. And the next passages we promise will be shorter. <laughs> do you think that's a, a promise that we can keep, Hannah? Yes, I do. I think we can do it. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks so much for tuning in, and see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you.